In the old days, Thailand was once known to be a very fertile land, but in reality, there was not a trace of that in what His Majesty saw on those visits. Evidence of abject poverty was everywhere. The people's plight had never been included in any central government surveys, since the areas were hardly accessible by road. In times of bad drought, we had no rice grains to mill even for our own meal. His Majesty said once that we were to return the people's affection by our deeds rather than words. By all means, the cause of their sufferings must be tackled. His Majesty came to the conclusion that going places to hand out blankets and clothing to them was comparable to an attempt to fill an ocean. The objective could never be fulfilled. It would be better, he said, for us to see them in person, to inquire through our talking with them and establish where the root cause of their ills lay, why they did not have enough to eat, why rice planting came to zero harvest. Summer was spent in Hua Hin. Once the rainy season started, His Majesty might travel to Pikun Tong. From Pikun Tong to Skupan. After an interval, His Majesty would take off to Chiang Mai. That made up a whole year for him. With time, the problems became clear to His Majesty, and development assistance had been planned so as to cover all parts of the country. During General Prem Din Sulanon's premiership, more than two decades later, the government made it a point to help ease His Majesty's burden by accompanying His Majesty on his working trips and working to assist the poor on a more concrete and systematic basis. General Prem remarked to Ajahn Sanat and Dr. Sumet that it was not right to sit back while His Majesty was toiling in those rough and remote border areas. What more, financial support was also from his own personal pocket. The missions should be the government's responsibility instead. That was how the special task force entitled the Office of the Royal Development Projects Board came into being. It was very late at night, but the big map was still spread in front of His Majesty. The map was used in a briefing to him on matters happening in the land. Given the fact that His Majesty was well versed in multiple areas of specialization, it could be the reason why he could see things more clearly than others. In any case, it was just the first chapter of His Majesty's visit to the remote areas of the country. The map you see His Majesty carrying around with him on the trips is in fact the source of data bearing details pertaining to the conditions applying to each individual village in the kingdom, including its vicinity too. His Majesty could make analysis by just consulting his map. For His Majesty, who could envisage the condition along the routes he was to take, some roads were covered with dust during the dry season. Some were infested with potholes after flooding had receded, and some were in the midst of a dense tropical forest. Nothing of the sort would deter him from taking his trips. The king had to wade through mud. Mud was on his shoes, inside his socks. He was determined to come. Really, those paths were tough, even for ox-drawn carts. Bumpy, covered with rocks, you know, and quite on a slant too. How his car could have negotiated that, I still wonder to this day. On the trips, he insisted on doing the driving himself, otherwise he would just walk. He said that was how one would have the feel of the place. His Majesty made a thorough analysis of the geographical features, altitude, depth, etc. His main philosophy is, whatever you plan or do must reflect the natural environment as well as geographical features applying there. Travelling by other means of transportation, such as by helicopter, His Majesty would review and revise his maps. He would be very displeased seeing members of his entourage asleep, saying flying by helicopter is a privilege. They should realize that official properties were in use, so falling asleep on it was not the way to optimize their services. His Majesty was looking at the actual site referred to in the map spread before him the previous night. 
The people, village headmen and officials representing the government sector's concern, had a chance to brief His Majesty further so that he could make final corrections or enter updated notes. You see, they had been out for years. What he did was to inquire with the local people, pointing at the spot of his interest. He would ask whether this or that still existed, if any. He then scribbled some notes before handing them over to army personnel on duty for further actions. I think he was security personnel. I was village headman then. His Majesty asked me if the spot where he was pointing at on the map was called Sub Sombun. Was there a source of water? I told him yes. Well, it's subterranean water, sir. You mean water is available year-round? I said yes. Development work must take account of the local environment in terms of the physical environment. The sociological environment, we mean certain characteristics which we cannot force people to change. We just go in and find out what the people really want and then fully explain to them.